A cluster of three eye-catching super tall buildings was planned to meet office space demand and elevate the city on the global stage as China's financial center. Shanghai Tower was always meant to be the crowning achievement. Sponsored by a partnership of state-owned developers and financed by the Shanghai Municipal Government, work on the 2.4 billion US dollar skyscraper began in 2008. Eight years and 128 floors later, the twisting tower stunned the globe with its size and odd design, transforming skyscrapers into superblocks. With almost a million square meters of real estate available, these buildings are one of the densest locations on Earth. Encourage comparison, only one of them achieves a world record. The Shanghai Tower is a shining example of green architecture and its power to change the world. With a height of 632 meters, the Shanghai Tower is the world's second highest tower. The Shanghai Tower can be seen from the Bund and various other points across the city, but it's not the tower's massive size that makes it so eye-catching. It's the structure's ecologically friendly design. The Shanghai Tower was created by Gensler, an American architectural firm. All three of the Shanghai Tower's primary partners are government-owned businesses. China's rare blend of capitalist and communist administration systems makes the tower's stakeholders communist state entities, despite its capitalist idea. Projects like the Shanghai Tower are only achievable when governmental and commercial alliances work together. The Shanghai Municipal Government was also instrumental in the tower's development. According to municipal laws, green space must account for 33% of the land. As a result, one-third of the land on which the tower rests is landscaped green space. The tower is divided into many zones, thus transforming it into a city in the sky. Offices, shops, cultural organizations, and hotels have their zones. Several design elements contribute to remarkable sustainability. These include the shape of the building, its glass structure, temperature management, and energy systems. The shape of a skyscraper has a considerable impact on its long-term viability. As you near the pinnacle, the tower becomes twisted and narrows. The tower has rounded corners as well. These architectural components ensure that the tower can withstand Shanghai's frequent storms. Furthermore, the design allows the construction to use far less costly materials. These choices are also financially feasible, with the builders saving $50 million. Like other skyscraper structures, Shanghai Tower is a mixed-use construction that acts as an office, a hotel, and offers tourist or observation places, shops, parking, exhibitions, and art displays. The first five stories are dedicated to retail. Simultaneously, office space occupies the 8th to 80th stories. The hotel occupies the 84th to the 110th floor. The seven floors above that are boutique office floors and the uppermost 10 floors above the 117th floor are for observation and mechanical purposes. Jinjiang International Hotel operates the J Hotel, which covers 20 stories of the tower. It's the world's tallest hotel, surpassing the Ritz-Carlton on Hong Kong International Communal Center, which occupies the building's highest point. The exact amount of Shanghai Tower is occupied by the office and observatory rather than the hotel. However, the hotel in Shanghai Tower is more than one story higher than the International Commercial Center. The observational deck is situated on the 118th and 119th floors of the building and provides 360-degree views of the city. Atop Shanghai Tower, the world's highest bookstore, comprising of 52nd and 53rd floors, and the first level down, will open to the public. It has a business area of 6,500 square meters. The bookshop is more like a department store. Aside from selling books, the store also sells audiovisual products, artwares, ornaments, and even some snacks. Since its launch in 2016, Shanghai Tower has had several challenges, the most significant of which has been its meager occupancy rates. Even as late as 2018, the building was half vacant. The leased premises were offered to domestic firms. Only 30% of those who applied were allowed to relocate. Leases were even more reticent to be signed by highly sought-after global firms. This was attributable to several things. For starters, bureaucratic red tape and safety concerns from local fire officials feared that the tower's vast height would need many years of certification. The tower was in debt to the tune of more than 1.5 billion, with significant operational deficits. Second, the building's bending glass exterior, which was supposed to mitigate wind loads, resulted in unsuitable floor plates, requiring tenants to pay for significant swaths of unused floor space. Site inspectors revealed that barely half the floor area was being utilized effectively on most floors. The Shanghai Tower's poor occupancy rate is painfully apparent at night when half the tower fails to light up. This is partly due to the significant delays associated with the Premium J Hotel that was meant to open atop the buildings. In 2020, the Shanghai municipality's gross domestic product, GDP, was about 3.87 trillion yuan. 
Shanghai is the most populous city in China and has the largest GDP of any Chinese city. It is located on the Yangtze River's southern estuary in eastern China. Shanghai's GDP had previously grown significantly, but economic development has slowed gradually over the years. In 2020, Shanghai's GDP growth was predicted to be 1.7%, relatively close to national forecasts in prior years. In recent years, the tertiary sector of the economy has had the most significant growth rates, and services now account for more than 70% of the value added to GDP. In contrast, Shanghai's one significant share of the industrial sector is gradually dwindling. The fastest expanding segments of the economy service sector were financial intermediation and information industries. Undoubtedly, the Shanghai Tower will assist much more in this area. So guys, with that, today's video essentially ends. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We will catch you guys in the next one. Peace!